Hey guys, it's Marshall from Going Gear, and today we're going to take a look at a light that a lot of people have been asking about, the Phoenix TK70. Been kind of slack on doing reviews lately, I've had a lot of other stuff going on, so sorry this one took so long, but we'll be sure to give it the proper treatment. So here it is, uh, you can see it comes disassembled, here's the battery tube, we'll set that to the side, here's the head, has a cap on the back of it just to protect it, we will set that to the side. Here is the switch. We're going to take the cap off of that one because we do not need it. Set that to the side. And here is the extender piece to let you take an additional D battery, which we are going to do. So we're going to take that and put that cap back in there. All right, let's take a little bit better look at the accessories that you get. You get a lanyard in there, which I think is pretty funny because it's a pretty massive light. If you lose this giant D cell light with a head that big, then uh, you know, maybe you shouldn't have the light in the first place. <laughs> you get a shoulder strap. Not quite as nice as the one that the O-Lights come with, but you still get a shoulder strap because this thing does have a decent amount of size and weight to it. Instruction manual, warranty card, and of course, the caps. And then a bunch of styrofoam. So that's the packaging and accessories. No holster on this one. I know people are going to ask, but no, it does not come with a holster. <laughs> Some of the larger uh, 4.7s and other lights do, but uh, TK70 no dedicated holster as of yet. All right, so the light, I'll show you how to assemble it real quick. This is the battery tube. We've got the head, so we're gonna take the cap off the bottom of the head, and we're gonna stick it onto the battery tube. Just screws on right like that. And then I'm not gonna screw it on all the way, and then the cap goes there on the bottom. So that's the configuration that you're gonna be using if you're using three D-cell batteries. But this thing will also take four, and I have four, so we are going to use four. So this extender screws right on top, like that. I'm going to screw that all the way on there. Put the head, I'll show you the contacts and everything. There's the dual switches, that's how you can control it. Screw the head on there. Lots of threads on this guy. And then the tail cap. All right, before I put the tail cap on there, I'm going to put the batteries in. But before I put the batteries in, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about batteries. Uh, this comes up a lot from our customers. We get people that try to return lights or uh, complain about lights that had the batteries leak inside them. That's generally not going to be covered by a manufacturer's warranty. Um, unless they're really feeling generous, they're usually not going to fix your light. So try to avoid alkalines if you can. A lot better are these, like these Rayovac low self discharge nickel metal hydride rechargeables. These are good. Sanyo antelopes are good. Um, I mean, when you're spending 200 something bucks on a flashlight, it's not the most expensive one that we sell. Check out our Surefire UB3T if you want to see the current most expensive one that we sell. But uh, still, 200 bucks and some change. Um, alkalines have the tendency to leak. Not that they do it all the time, but they do have the possibility that you do not have with rechargeables. So I definitely recommend rechargeables over alkalines if uh, that's something that you can do. So anyway, let's go ahead and put the batteries in the light. So we got four of these guys. I'm just slide them in there. Stick the tail cap on. Screw it on all the way. Another nice thing that you get with the rechargeables is you actually usually get better performance, a little bit better output um, in the flashlights that can take them. Some of the, pretty much every single flashlight we sell that takes alkalines will be able to take the nickel metal hydrides, but some of the cheaper brands that you get at Walmart and such, they can't handle the, uh, the extra power that the rechargeables can provide. Okay, for the interface of the light, you have two switches, the same switches that you're gonna see on a lot of the other Phoenix TK lights, their headlamps, and a lot of their, uh, their newer models are using the dual switches. This one has two switches up here by the head right next to each other. The one on the right is going to be your power switch. So you tap it and it's going to turn the light on. And the one on the left is going to cycle between your four different outputs. And each time you hit it, it's going to cycle between. Now, if you want to get into the flashing modes, it does have some flashing modes as well. So the power switch, the one on the right, double click that and that is how you get into your flashing modes. So there you can see you've got that variable strobe. And then the switch on the left will switch between your flashing modes, same as it does when you have the regular illumination. There's your SOS, and then back into the strobe. You can just cycle between those two. Now if you turn the light off, 
and then turn it back on, you notice that it's not going to go back into the flashing mode if you left it off in a flashing mode. It's going to go back into the last regular illumination mode that you had. But when you go back into the flashing modes, when you double click, it'll go back into the one that you uh, had it in when you turned it off or switched back into the regular illumination. So the interface of it, again, switch on the right, turns it on, switch on the left, switches modes, switch on the right, double click it when it's on, and it will switch into your flashing modes. Switch on the left, switches between the flashing modes. All right, so that's the interface of the light. A lot of people are comparing this to the, uh, the Olight SR92, so I've got one of those right here as well. You can see the body of the SR92 is a little bit fatter, but it's significantly smaller, especially when you have all four cells in the TK70. But they're both using the three Cree XML LEDs down in there. You got the back of the light there with the battery indicator and everything. But uh, we'll go and take both of these outside so you can get a more accurate comparison between the two. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, we have the TK70. My hands aren't quite big enough to hold up the SR92 at the same time, but I do have the 4D mag light here. So let's go ahead and try the 4D mag light out first. See how it does. 15 feet, 100 feet out there. All right, let's try out the SR92 first. There you can see just the obnoxious amount of light that comes out of this thing. We'll drop it down to the lower output. And you can see still a ton of light. A ton of ton of light that's going to come out of both of these. And that's going to be illustrated a lot better when we do the distance shot. 100 feet. Doesn't really do this justice. It's the longer distances where you really see the performance of it. So there is the TK70 at 100 feet. I'll drop it through the different outputs. Of course, as you can tell, it's almost too bright at that level. So let's try a little bit longer distance. We've got 100 yards to work with. Let's try that. Okay, now we have more distance to work with. Got the TK70, SR92, and then the mag light. Let's try out the mag light first. There's his house, 50 yards, tree in the front yard at 100 yards. Can't really see anything out at 100 yards. But of course, it's just a little incandescent mag light. Let's try out the SR92 first. There you can see, of course, absolutely no problem. What I love about this one is you get that great hot spot, really concentrated, out to 100 yards on the high and even the low. Absolutely no problem for this light. But you can see the amount of spill on this thing. I mean, everything around the light, everything in front of me is lit up really, really well, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's like a wall of light. You just turn it on, everything in front of you lights up rechargeable battery really cool light so let's try out the TK70 see how it does there you go a little bit more concentrated if you uh, notice the reflectors might be kind of hard to see on the videos but the reflectors on the TK70 are actually a little bit deeper than they are on the SR92 so you get a little bit more concentrated light shine that around a little bit you can see the spill actually sacrifices a little bit because of that more concentrated light because of the, the more concentrated throw I'll zoom in on the top of the tree. See how well it lights that up. Not bad for D batteries. All right, we'll do them side by side real quick, just so you can see how they do side by side. So we'll have the SR92 there on the right. Make sure it's on high. Yep, it's on high. And then there is the TK70 on the left. So you can see a more concentrated beam on the TK70, wider beam on the SR92. So definitely a personal preference kind of thing. If you want the king of throw, definitely check out the SR90 from Olight. That uh, is still the light. We haven't seen anything that comes even close in terms of LEDs to the throw on that guy. But that is the new TK70. Really cool light from Phoenix. Really great light if you want to be able to use D-cell batteries. It's kind of big, but uh, you can drop down the size from what you saw in the video. Uh, just by taking that cell extender off and it'll take 3D's instead of 4D's. So either of these lights you can get from us at goinggear.com. If you have any questions or comments you can reach us in the comments or at goinggear.com. And if you like the video be sure to subscribe. We put out a lot of flashlight videos.